Hello, fellow poetry lover. Uh, today, The Death of the Ball Turret Gunner by Randall Gerald. From my mother's sleep, I fell into the state. I hunched in its belly till my wet fur froze. Six miles from earth, loose from its dream of life, I woke to black flack and the nightmare fighters. And when I died, they washed me out of the turret with a hose. Uh, 1945 poem written by, as I said, Randall Gerald, who was born in 1914, uh, died in 1965. He's uh, an American poet, critic, uh, children's author. He uh, was the precursor, he was the, uh, held the position of the precursor of the, uh, of an, of the uh, laureate, poet laureate of the United States. Uh, in 1942, he joined the USA, U.S. Air Force, where a lot of his early poetry came from that, his wartime experience in World War II. Uh, he rose to the position of a celestial navigational tower operator. A um, little background to the poem. What is a ball turret gunner? A uh, ball turret was um, mounted on, mounted or embedded on, uh, so I think, believe it's the belly of, of, of heavy bombers. And it was this, it was a, it was a manned turret where the gunner would slide himself into this thing that had uh, two machine guns. And I uh, would basically have to kind of assume like almost like a fetal position. And it was so cramped in there that you always got the, the smallest guy in your crew to go into it. Uh, um, and uh, I, you probably you couldn't wear you couldn't wear a parachute inside of it. Um, and yeah, so it, and it was one of these, you know, not, you know, you're on, you're on, you're in the belly of this thing. And I guess a pair of incredibly vulnerable position. So, yeah, let's let's with that little little bit of background of from some dude who basically read that on uh, on on Wikipedia. Let's go into the actual poem. Um, it's funny. Uh, so I'm going to start off with just the, the from my mother's sleep. That was a line that confused me when I first um, went through this poem, um, though, as, as we go through, we get uh, from my mother's sleep and um, loosed from its dream of life. And I woke uh, to black flack and I died. And I, I include I died in all those kind of waking and, and waking things and, um, and sleep because death is another kind of a sleep. So there were, we seem to be going from a sleep on one end to uh, dying death, another sleep on the other end in this very short, compact poem. I fell into the state and um, thing to know, wouldn't be able to know by just listening to it is that state is capitalized. So I fell into the state. Um, maybe you get that from the, the state where um, at first I saw that as just like, oh, the state as in like, this is government. This is like two governments who are clashing in this war and it's war and it's, it's states, but it's also could be you know, a state of being. Uh, and indeed, when I go with a month, I, from my mother's sleep, it's like, at first I was like, well, why are we talking about the mother sleeping? But it's like, actually, I think we're talking about an embryo inside of the mother and that kind of a sleep. And then from that kind of a sleep, you fall in, you drop out, you drop out into a state of being into the world. Um, and then it's like, and, but you, you, you fall into the state and you and, and instead of it being kind of the nurturing, life-giving, um, you know, womb of of mother, you get I hunched in its belly till my wet fur froze. So I'm this little creature, but I'm inside of this really in in like you know this ball turret, this in his hospitable little confined state until my wet fur froze. I'm a frozen little animal inside of this domed little ball on the on the thing, and you're. As it says, six miles from Earth, so you are freezing, and I have to, I have to wonder, like, if it's one of these things of like you're inside, inside of such a con, con, confined space that you probably can't bulk up on all the as as much as much clothing as you want to try and bundle yourself up because it's so enclosed that you have to squeeze yourself in that you you are probably freaking the the soldier in this this ball turret gunner is freezing to death in this thing, and it's six miles from. Earth, and it's like you're loosed from its dream of life, and its in this case seems to mean state, which is the government, but it's also from a loosed from this state of being, if you can take my my reading of that, and at that point, um, you're waking from life to black flack. Um, this is the 
the enemy the the enemy fighter and and the nightmare fighters so we're we're where it's like we're going from a life to a nightmare this dream of life to a nightmare and it's the nightmare of death of black flack killing killing this it's the this the poem is the death of a ball turret gunner and this is the black flack apparently just ripping ripping through the ball this highly exposed ball turret and just killing this killing this guy and indeed the next line and when i died they washed me out of the turret with a hose because that black flack goes through that thing and you're in this enclosed space and what's left they washed out with a hose which um i think you know this is one of these poems that's you know always anthologized in in uh not well, it's, and it's regularly anthologized it was anthologized in the rattle bag uh and it was uh something i think i i probably also did pick up in a class and i think one of the professors there was saying like yeah this is a war poem but this is definitely a modern age war poem this isn't about the glory of of, of war this is not like the shining knight going off to battle and winning great victories and coming back no this is some poor wet and wet frozen animal getting liquefied in the air and what's left they just washed out with a hose that's that's human life uh that's the hero's journey in the modern in the in the modern era that's how much it's worth you the hero doesn't come back alive the you're not a hero you are a wet a, a wet frozen animal who um gets killed and gets washed out of this turret with a hose with one of the dangers I think people talk about sometimes, at least people who don't want to glorify war poetry, is the fact that just talking about war uh, is exciting. It can be exciting. It can be thrilling. It's, a, it's a adrenaline. It can be the power. I, I read a book of uh, just recently, uh, Carl Malinti's, uh, What It's Like to Go to War, and saying, you know, him, him talking about how horrible of an experience it was, but at the same time, he can't say that he didn't have um, there weren't times that were thrilling and that he felt the power of having the entire might of the U.S. Army at his command uh, as this young man in uh, Vietnam, in his case. Um, so, you know, it's 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 trying to kind of wrestle those wrestle those things of like, you know, this isn't something I want to promote. I don't want to. I mean, uh, Carl Melendez talks about just how how terribly uh, war going to war, you know, messed him up and how the there needs to be uh, supports for soldiers uh, to, to, just so that they're not completely destroyed psychologically. Um, and indeed, someone like uh, Randall Darrell, just looking at his his biography, it seems like he is someone who, as many of soldiers who came home, uh, even if there weren't visible wounds, um, there was there was a lot of psychological damage done to him. Uh, and this poem, I think, does a really good example is a good example of. This is not this is not glorifying it. He is he's going from the very birth, the mother's sleep of this soldier to his death, being washed out like a hose in this in this like metal womb where it's almost like it's an abortion and you're washing you're washing out the contents of of, of the metal womb and you're just gonna sh you're just gonna shove another soldier in there uh, and it's gonna happen again and again and again and it's not life it's it's death it's death it's death um, and I you know. <laughs> To leave to leave with a happy happy quote uh, because this comes into came into my head and I wanted to get it. It's from uh, it's it's from Nabokov from Speak Memory saying that you know the cradle rocks above the, an abyss and common sense tells us that existence is but a brief crack of light between the two eternities of darkness. And he goes on to say how like you know people are much more uh, sanguine about the uh, prenatal darkness. They look at that like much more calmly uh, than the one they're heading for, and indeed, this is a poem that headlong goes from mother's sleep to being washed out of a washed out of the ball turret with a hose. Um, it's that sudden sudden punch uh, and sudden like you are. It's like in 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 the cold hard facts of a war, you're a wet frozen animal who gets who gets obliterated and gets washed out with a hose. It's like. That's that that I think is a valuable thing to think about about uh, about war. Um, you know, there's there's all the other things on there, but I just that visceral being a trapped, wet, frozen animal curled inside of this metal metal womb uh, until my wet fur froze, and being loosed, you know, loosed from life and waking to the nightmare of the black flack and the fighters and the nightmare fighters. It's just yeah. 
yeah, so that's that. Those are that's my reaction, my thoughts on the death of a vault turret gunner by uh, Randall Gerald. I think next time I'm going to try some Bukowski just for some later kicks. Uh, uh, strip cover lit guys are doing something, uh, and I figure I'll, I'll I'll hook my hook my poetry wagon to their uh, them their uh, wagon train and do afternoons into night. And if I don't, well, you'll know that I just didn't have anything to say. All right, but hey, I always have something to say. Yes, that's why I'm on BookTube. <laughs> More videos later.